but you asked me, have we met before? Tiff, you want to tell him the story? I, I want to see if you remember. <laughs> so, because my, my my memory may be different than your memory. The first time I thought I met you, I don't know where we were. It was somewhere in Los Angeles. It was somewhere at some party. It might have been Vanity Fair, maybe. Maybe. And I no. I'm Wait, saying the ahead. first time. I, no, the first time I thought that we met. <laughs> Uh -huh. I thought I was meeting you for the first time. And I said, man, you know, um, congratulations, sis, on everything. Like, you know, you're, you know, you've definitely created like your own lane. Like you're, you know, I just remember thinking, to, I didn't say everything I was thinking, by the way, just so you understand. But I mm -hmm. remember thinking to myself, man, you know, her voice is so recognizable. And when I say your voice, I don't just mean like, your vocal tone, I just mean like your personality and just who you are and what it is that you do. And I remember saying probably a fraction of that. More like, hey, you know, congratulations on everything you're doing. Like, there's only one you, you know what I mean? And you were like, no, yeah, nice to meet you too. You were like, but you know, this is not the first time we met. Do you remember that story? Yes, and the first time we met was at the L.A. Design Center. You was having that ice cream shoe party. And um, I was dancing my ass off. And then I went up to you and said, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Tiffany Haddish. I'm going to be a successful comedian. Can I have a pair of shoes? <laughs> and you laughed at me. And security pushed me out the way. And I was like, well, who's going to be my friend? Yeah, well, you know what? I am, number one. <laughs> <laughs> you also said I said something else. You did say something else. Okay, cool. I like that. And listen, I love you for, I like, yes, great. Um, <laughs> I'm professional, bro. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> oh, wow, now I have to find out what this is. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was cool. It wasn't nothing like, like that. It was just, no. it was just. It was just, it's funny when she tells the story. It's crazy because you went on to take that and turn that into like a gold mine of just like, you know, a trove of just characters. And so it was amazing. But I got, I got to meet that firsthand. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. had my Holly Berry wig on. <laughs> yeah, I, I was killing it that night. You couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> that was amazing did you get started in stand-up first or with acting well you know it all started back in 1994 94 92 really i had a crush on this boy named Adi, and he was in drama and we was going to, to this predominantly white middle school and i liked Adi. And one of my friends was like, if you get in drama, you and Adi will be the only black people in the class. And then maybe y'all could hook up. And I was like, bad. So I got in drama class thinking that, you know, we was going to end up getting a kiss or something in the scene or something. But um, my drama teacher was open minded and, and, you know, about interracial relationships. So it didn't pop off. But I, I fell in love with drama. I fell in love with acting. And then, you know, I was in foster care at that time, too. And so, um, and I was moving around, but I was, I kept going like AWOL, staying at the school because I wanted to stay in the drama because I thought maybe me and Adi would get together. And then I stayed in whatever classes he was in, I was trying to be in. I was, I was definitely his Steve Urkel. By the time I was 15, I was getting in trouble in school a lot. And so the uh, social worker was like, you got two choices. You can either go to uh, psychiatric therapy or you can go to Laugh Factory Comedy Camp. And by then I had already won like three drama competitions uh, for uh, Southern California um, drama festivals that we would have. And so I went to the Laugh Factory because um, she told me I got two choices. You can go to psychiatric therapy, comedy camp. And I was like, which one got drugs? She said, you definitely going to be on drugs if you go to therapy. So I went to the comedy camp. I auditioned, I got in, and um, yeah, and I fell in love with stand-up. And 
that's where I met my first check was with stand up. Wow. So you know what's crazy is that you just like unlock something from so many people who are listening to this right now who either are young or have kids and you know was that a um, social worker or was that a guidance counselor? It was my social you? worker. It was my social okay. worker. So your social yeah. worker just like through you as an example just like unlock something for so many like people like usually they would end up being sent somewhere to like see if something's wrong or you know to see if they had a problem and really what it was is you you had a gift you had an answer and um that I just man bless whoever that social worker is like that person is yeah, That's I just amazing. found her. I found her like two years ago and was just like, thank you. She was like, you the first kid to come for me. She, I, guess, I think she thought I was going to be like talking crazy to her, but I was so grateful. And she said she'd been seeing me and she proud of me and, and we cried. It was great. That's she saved wow. my life. Yes. Yes. Do you have any kind of, do you have like a foundation? Oh, definitely. I have the um, She Ready Foundation. We, uh, we get uh, foster youth suitcases because a lot of times you get moved around and when you get moved all your clothes are in trash cans and I mean not trash cans but trash bags and that's how you move right and so you lose a lot of your things so I get them suitcases so they don't feel like garbage because that's what I was feeling like when I was moving around and that's part of why I was getting in trouble um, talking so much and doing so much in school because I just you know I didn't feel like I was really worthy so, um, and I'll never forget the day somebody gave me a suitcase. I felt like a person, like I'm a traveler now. Now I'm a visitor. Now I'm on a journey and adventure. I'm not just garbage being moved from house to house. So it started making me look at the world differently because I had a suitcase to put my things in and I get to travel and visit people. That's what I was telling myself. And so um, I do that for the youth and we got internship. Uh, internship program to get more um, people like me in the industry because I want to be I want to be represented by you know people that understand how I think uh, a lot mm -hmm. of times my representation although they're very good they don't understand um, my work ethic they don't understand my my uh, ambition uh, and my strive for you know success I don't think they understand it <clears throat> but I know somebody that comes from the struggle I come from would understand it and they, they would they would want to prove their, you know, abilities as well. So I try to get them in different programs. We're like at HBO, at Disney, at um, Showtime, wow. different studios that I have these foster youth working at. And then also um, uh, I get them scholarships and things like that help them out. Wow. You know? That's amazing. So she it's ready called She it's called she, she Ready? She Ready Foundation. She Ready Foundation. Hey. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, man. You're, you're like, so impressive. It's so, it's, it's beautiful. You're like a walking success story. Am I? I just don't want to be a walking statistic. Or we change the demographic, change the dynamic and then be a different type of statistic. What do you, what, what do you mean by that? You know, like, okay, so uh, I guess, well, technically, coming from the background that I come from, I'm <clears> supposed <throat> to be a baby mama with, like, you know, mm -hmm, six, mm -hmm. six, seven baby daddies on welfare, Section 8. You know, on average, that's what's going on out here. Um, and I kind of refuse to be that. I want to be... Even even though there's nothing wrong with that, because it's that's a whole job in itself. You know, that's you creating people and you know putting them on this planet, populating and trying to teach them what you can and be present for them, right? Um, and I should have been in jail like you know like six times. I remember my student counselor, my guidance counselor in high school was like, either you're going to go to prison or you're going to be a big star. Either way, because you <laughs> orchestrate a lot. <laughs> so. Um, I what, was were, a big star. Were you a troublemaker as a kid or no? I was definitely the, you know, um, I could get some stuff started. I can, I can influence, influence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wouldn't say a troublemaker, maybe a, 
talker, maybe a a a a, 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 a party czar, if you will. Uh, <laughs> an energy. You, you grew up in South Central, right? Yeah, I'm from South Central LA. So, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? Um, I listened to a lot of like uh, rap and R and B. Uh, and classical music. My grandma, when I got in her house, we was listening to a lot of like classical music and and like Barry White and James Brown. Uh, mm. I lived with a Spanish family for a little bit, so I was listening to a lot of like mariachi music and Spanish love songs and stuff. Um, yeah, but I would say mostly, mostly like SWV, Mary J. Blige, you know, uh, that that's how that's how salt and pepper. You know, I grew up in the 1900s. <laughs> I love your accent, salt and pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so impressed, man. I, I I'm telling you, I I ain't know none of this. It's like, you know how they say like when kids are like when they want attention, they act out, but mm -hmm. you literally acted out of your situation. Yeah, I did. I used to come up with, look, okay, so I was going to this predominantly, I was getting bussed, right? So I wake up every morning at four o'clock, 4.45, get to the bus stop, catch the bus by 5.15, get to school, right? And um, I thought like every day I was on the Nickelodeon Awards or something because I thought all white people lived in TV because they wasn't in my community except for like the police. And I thought they was all from Chips or America's Most Wanted, you know, so... Um, my pers my my point of view was like, oh, in order to make friends, I got to make people laugh. And so that can get you in a lot of trouble. But um, I didn't know how to even behave around so many white people. That was like, that was strange for me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk like this. And I'm gonna like, hi, my name is <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, what's your name? Okay, cool. Like, <laughs> it's like so fake. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fake, and then I would make up these characters um, just to like make friends. I had a friend named Carbolita, and I would talk to her. She was like imaginary; nobody could see her but me. And I would be like, "Oh, move! You're gonna sit on Carbolita." And then I had like a fake bird that I called Cracker, and I would always ask Cracker if it wanted a Polly, and I would have like actual crackers, and I break them up on my shoulder. And I was really good at cheating because I couldn't read. I couldn't read very well, and so um, I would cheat on everything. So the best way to cheat is to make smart friends, right? And you make the smart friends, and they let you copy their homework. And uh, and then if you make them laugh, they kind of lean your way, so then you can kind of see their tests. You know, it's, it's little things I would do that still work to this day. <laughs> what is your sign? What's my sign? Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a Sagittarius, darling. What's your sign? Aries. Aries, you fire. Mm -hmm. When? So are you. April fifth. April fifth. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. What'd you do for your birthday this year? Um, we went to this place called uh, Caring House. Uh, it's like a like a a place where they feed like the homeless. Okay. And I did that for a couple of hours. It was amazing. We usually do it for Christmas and Thanksgiving, but this year I was like, man, you know, I really wanna, I wanna do that. I wanna know that like, I, I served on my birthday. You know, for a hot second when you said Karen House and you said it so slow, I thought you went to a place to go get verbally abused. <laughs> Karen House. <laughs> That's what I meant. That is, you said it so slow. I was like, you went to go get verbally abused? No, nah, no. Nah, this place called oh, Caring House. Caring House. <laughs> Caring Hilarious. House. Nah. Okay. I don't, you know what's so funny? It's like, how do you handle a situation like that when somebody just goes zero to a hundred out of nowhere? First, I pray for them. And then, you know, sometimes people need to be met where they at or you need to bring them <laughs> to where you at. <laughs> so it just depends. Like I don't they need to I don't be met where they at. <laughs> Some, Interesting way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm from the street, so you might you might want to be careful with me going zero to a hundred. You better take me on a slow walk. 
Because there you go. To the <laughs> I, might, I might pop off and meet you where you at and surpass you. <laughs> <laughs> and I had you confused. I walk away and then I walk away and be like, what the hell just happened? Like, <laughs> one time I was doing a comedy show and this woman was like in the audience I'm like I'm gonna beat your ass I'll come up there and beat your ass right now I was like come on let me get let me call my father right fast heavenly father I approach your throne in your son's name on today this woman in the audience talking about whooping my ass well lord I'm gonna need you to give me the holy strength and all the power that you got Fill my body up with it so I can roll this bitch up like a Lord. Please, Lord, <laughs> let my hands strike her like you struck Babylon. Hello, Lord. <laughs> now putting my ponytail off and taking my earrings off the whole time. <laughs> she never made it to the stage. Wow. <laughs> she never that, made was it. This, but... Was there footage of this? And I don't think so. And maybe on somebody's phone or something, but I don't think so. This was in, it's probably, it probably is footage because it was in a casino. And mm. the security ended up snatching her because she came running for the stage and I was praying. Mm -hmm. I was ready too. I was going through some emotional stuff myself. So I was ready to go ahead and smite her. You know? <laughs> smite. Let's go hit her with the hands. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What is your guilty comedic, uh, you know, pleasure? Like, like I'll reveal mine afterwards. What is something that breaks you up every time and nearly any time it happens, it's probably going to, you're going to fall out because it's just one of those things in life that you just cannot hold it together when it comes to that. What's the skeleton key joke for, or, or skeleton key like humor for you that you find humorous? I'm gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nasty. Um. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Tell um, me. It always makes me giggle too. Uh, when when a guy got a crush on passes gas, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> like whoever I'm with, when he fart, like I'm I'm laughing. Sometimes I give like a little fact, like "Oh, you nasty!" <laughs> like you got me laughing. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm simple, man. A fart. I'm just like a big ass kid, man. A fart will make me laugh, man. I think I. A part just to like break the tension up in the room, like just to make you laugh. Like I got in an argument with a dude one time and he was like yelling at me and he farted and I couldn't help but to laugh at him. <laughs> I said, Oh, you blew a gasket. <laughs> mm. Okay. Oh, that's what, that's nasty, but that's what make me laugh. And then I also think to myself when a guy passes gas around me, he loves me. He comfortable. He feels safe. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, seeing, seeing old people fight each other, that make me laugh too. Oh yeah. Like, I, I got a couple good YouTubes. Yeah, that. now I seen it in real life because I used to ride the public transportation. You know, if you see them old ladies fighting over a seat, that is, it's all slow motion. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to do private shows at geriatrics homes. And you'd be surprised how many love triangles is happening in a geriatric home. But these women be fighting over these men. And that is entertaining. And my favorite, honestly, is two things. One, when people sing and have no idea that they're like really not that good. <laughs> 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 and they be dead ass serious. And be like damn near borderline pissed off <laughs> when, when people don't get it. I want the Lord to forgive me because that's got to be hell to not be able to distinguish that you're not that good. But and to be they believe in themselves. It man, is <laughs> the American Idol bloopers of the ones that you know they bring on there and they know they're not good. Like them producers going to hell. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they always give a testimony yeah. like, man, my, my friends, they tell me I'm good. They know that I'm good. I just don't understand what happened out there. Like, everyone hears my voice and they think that I'm good. You know what I'm saying? That, that, like, when they're that convinced, man, all of that just makes me fall out. That's, I cannot hold it together. What and do you watch when you sad that makes you happy? Like, changes your vibe. Do you have anything that you watch or, like, listen these, to to change your vibe? Besides these videos. The, okay. These videos. <laughs> videos like that. And then the other thing is, too, when I was a kid, <clears throat> I think it started with my dad. You know, whenever my dad would get really mad, I would lose my because he would just be so mad. And, you know, usually when you're too mad, you trip over something or, you know, you because you're so mad, you kind of like your bearings are not all together. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, seeing people mad when people I don't know what it is, it's always. When people get really mad and they talk and they get piped up, <laughs> I don't know why I can't. I, it really makes me, you know what? Have you ever met anybody that like don't like to get joked and don't like to get laughed at and they get really mad and they'll up for that? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That is how you lay me out. Okay. <laughs> Somebody that don't like getting laughed at. <laughs> <laughs> and and people are laughing, the shit that it makes them do and say. And it's probably torture for them. That's like discomfort. Like, you know, man, you know, it's gotta it's it's gotta be like some sort of anxiety. But I gotta tell you, like, man, I got a homeboy. And they look at things like this. I got a homeboy, right? There was one time he had this belt buckle on, and we was like, man, you keep wearing a damn belt buckle every, like all the time. Why you keep wearing it? And we said something and it was just myself and like, you know, two of our homeboys. And he was like, man, you know, why are you going to say that in front of millions? Because to him, <laughs> it was millions. Them two people were millions of people. <laughs> like, like, I don't know if y'all get why that's funny, but like there are people who look at it like that. Like literally one person laughing feels like the nation. And well, they're thinking on a cellular level. See, they're thinking of every cell in that person's body is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> <And> that's, <laughs> they one of them woke people. They super woke. So they know, like, not just that one person heard it, but the bacteria in that person's intestines or the parasites are laughing at me, too. That's exactly how it is. And me knowing yeah, that... Other I can't even, like, I have to be careful joking with my brother. I wait for him to crack all the jokes, and then I hit him with, like, two, three good ones. And then he gets so mad, he'd be like, oh, don't talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> and we all That's laugh. amazing. So, you, wait a minute. You have a brother? Mm -hmm. I got two brothers, two younger brothers and two younger sisters. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing. And I just found out I got a brother in Switzerland or Sweden, one of them places. Okay. <laughs> How did you find that out? Genealogy? 23 and me. And um, but a dude had been hitting me up on Facebook talking about your dad is my dad. Your dad is my dad. And I'm like, my dad ain't say nothing about you and don't and don't be bothering me because I'm famous. And I was not famous yet. But <laughs> <laughs> coming at me and I was like, hey, take a 23 and me test. If we link up, then we related. Cool. And then he's like, then you will fly me to America. I said, you can fly yourself. You older than me. You a grown man. I will take you to lunch and you can pay. I'll pick you up from the airport and you can go ahead and charge my Tesla. Like you a grown man. I can't take care of a grown man. Mm -hmm. I love that. He is my brother. If I found out like three months ago that he's my brother. So he want me to fly him to America, but I'm not going to do it. How old is he? 45. Oh, so close. Is he, so I, I was uh, in doing my reading and look and stout research. And then uh, look, I, when I saw your special, I saw that you're Jewish, that you just found out you're Jewish. Yeah, I didn't just find out, but yeah, I had, I just had a bat mitzvah for my 40. A bat mitzvah, that's it, yeah, two years ago, right? Mm-hmm, Yeah. It was super fun. Are you Jewish? <laughs> we, sh I am. We share that in common. You probably know more than about Judaism than I do, though. Maybe. Did you have a good Passover? I did. Did you have oh, a, bar, a bar mitzvah? I did. How was and, it? Uh, 
It was great. I mean, we had a, I had a fake Muhammad Ali there shaking everyone's hands. <laughs> oh. Welcoming everybody to the sports uh, bar mitzvah theme. Okay. But wait did a minute. You have, did you have dancers? We had a, a Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I have all this on video, too. I should get it, break it out. Where was your party at? It was at this um, place here called Stephen S. Weiss when everybody who didn't go to Stephen S. Weiss called it the shul with the pool. Yeah. You know, um, that's where I'm a member. Yeah. I go Is to it really? Stephen S. Weiss. Oh, yeah. wow. So I went to elementary school there for like six or seven years. What year did you graduate? <laughs> um, I'm probably, you're 43? No. Oh, I'm, I'm 24 <laughs> for the 22nd, for the 21st year. <clears throat> but you, you, you were a member there just for uh, Temple or? Uh, for Temple. That's, uh, it's funny, I, I, I went over there um, about two weeks ago just to drive by to see if they would let me like check out the, the like campus because it's grown so much since I've been there. And they were like, no shot, no one gets in here. <laughs> So you guys have to explain this to me. Bre what do you break want this to know? Down. So you said you found out. So that was in, was that in your twenty three and Me? No. So I found well, <clears throat> the twenty three and Me confirmed it, but I found out. Um, okay, so when I was younger, my grandma used to always tell me, you know, yo, daddy Jewish, yo, daddy Jewish. I didn't know my dad. I didn't meet him till I was like 27. I lost contact with him when I was three. I re we re-encountered each other when I was 27. And when I was 16, um, uh, 15, about to be 16, that's the same year of the comedy camp and everything. I went to a uh, spring dance and um, I met this DJ there, DJ Timbo. And DJ Timbo was like, Yo, cause I would, you know, when I party, everybody circle around. It's a, it's a situation, right? And he's like, you would be great at executive parties and bar mitzvahs. I'd love for you to come dance for me. And he gave me his card and I took his card because at that point in time, I, I, I decided I wouldn't tell nobody no or refuse them anymore. When they asked for my number or card, I'll just give them my grandma number. If they give me a card, I'll take the card and I'll just give it to my grandma. Cause, um, a boy had asked me for my number like maybe two months before, and I said no, and he threw uh, pine cones and freaking bottles at me and messed up my Arizona jean jacket. So from that point on, I was like, I'll always be nice to guys when they ask me for my number. Um, and, I, and to this day, I still give dudes my grandma's phone number. She's not even uh, alive anymore. God bless her soul, rest her soul. Uh, <laughs> still give out her phone number to people. Um, and she would love it because she get to talking to these guys and all that stuff. But anyways, the guy gave me his number. I go home to my grandma. I'm like, Grandma, this man want me to do executive parties and bar mitzvahs. He want me to dance for them. And she was like, girl, you better call that man. That's getting closer to your people. And I was like, my people? Because I didn't realize what a bar mitzvah was. In my mind, you get on the bar, you show your mitzvah, like you showing your stuff. You know, I'm thinking it's stripper. <laughs> So I'm like, Grandma, are we strippers? Is strippers in our family? She's like, no. And so then she broke down everything Judaism was about and, and about coming of age and all that stuff. And then um, when I turned 16, I ended up, I started working for the company. It's called Enterprise Entertainment. I'm sure you've been to some of their parties. And um, we did a lot of parties at, at Stephen S. White's Temple. And all over the country, we went all over the country. I, I did it for like 11 years I started emceeing them, doing comedy at them, coordinating activities for the kids. I killed a man once, uh, danced with him, <laughs> died. And then I had like stood back for a while, like, oh, my ass is deadly. I can't dance with people for, and I got over it. Um, they gave me a raise, so I got over it. But um, yeah, I did that for years. And I was just wondering, what, what year was your bar mitzvah? Look at you, so cute. <laughs> yeah, what year was that? Uh, this was probably in uh, 93 or something. 
You know what I wanted to say? Look, I'm going to chime in on, uh, I'm going to just take over y'all interview. Okay, so look, so uh, I wanted to say, you know what else that makes me always laugh no matter what? And when I'm like super sad and really down, like, and I get down sometimes, is watching videos of babies laughing. That's the mm. best sound in the whole freaking world. Yeah, I can that's just good. say that and it changes my vibe. Mm-hmm. And then I'm ready for success. Sometimes I wake up early in the morning. I don't want to get up early, but I got to get up because I got to be at work. And I'll just put on babies' laughs and just let that play for like 30 minutes. And then I'll start laughing too. Then I'm good. What kind of stuff are you working on now? Oh, I'm, um, okay, so I be, so I got um, a little downtime from filming. So when I have my little downtime from filming, I like to pretend like I'm a musical artist and I make up songs and stuff. And then I go record. <laughs> and then sometimes now that I'm famous, you know, I got a little notoriety. Uh, certain producers will give me tracks and they'll let me play on them. And so um, I got a song coming out this summer with Snoop Dogg and Lil Wayne. And I'm trying to get Paris Hilton on the track. Mm -hmm. It's called This What It Look Like. A Look Like. It's called Look Like. Wow. I'm excited about it. Impressive. Mm -hmm. I got another song with E-40 called Pick It Up. Mm -hmm. And then I got another song with uh, Jada Kiss. In uh, E40 called EBT. Which means? E, uh, electronic benefit transaction or something like that. But uh, eat better to di- tonight. That's the new food stamp so you don't be embarrassed. I think they need to bring that paper food stamp back though. <laughs> Why? Because dudes be out here with their EBT cards like they really got some money, but they like taking you to dinner uh, on a freaking on the government <laughs> on <their benefit. laughs> that's supposed to be for their kids or something you know general relief or whatever not not for dating I, I don't know I feel like if you got an EBT card and um, you single you should work towards getting off that EBT card before you go on dates I agree <clears throat> I mean we don't know people struggle though but I agree. No, but I don't think you should be dating if you if you struggling. Like dating is a it's an investment. That's an investment, you know. Facts. When Facts. I was when I was broke, I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna be out here dating, that's to get meals, and maybe <laughs> a place to sleep for the night. <laughs> but then I would be like, I got too much integrity or pride. I couldn't even like. I'd be like, nah, I ain't sleeping at that. I don't want. I don't want no parts. So. I'd rather sleep in my car. Did that happen a lot? Yeah, I lived in my car. For real? For how long? Yeah, uh, three different times, three months at a time. I learned my lesson. I feel like that was God trying to teach me um, how not to have too much pride. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, because I had a lot of pride at the time. I didn't want to ask for no help. Wow. My mind is blown. You don't sound like it. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I'm dead serious. If you knew me, you would. If you knew me, you would know. I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely like blown away. Like just hearing all these stories, it's like, man, it's, it's so rich, you know. It's so full and so condensed. It's like, but everybody's life is rich in full of really great stories. You just got to know how to cultivate them. That's all. No, 100 percent. But I just but you say these things, it just rolls off your back like water. Well, yeah, because I've dealt with it because, you know, I did the comedy camp, but then I did end up in psychiatric therapy. So (laughs) I've had to deal with it. You know, I had to like, you know, face my demons. I don't think I think like you can only run away for so long. It, or or hide stuff for so long. That's what, like, I'm not good at hiding. Like, don't play hide and seek with me cause, or hide and go get it because I'm be like, here I am. <laughs> like, because it's too much work to hide. It's too much. It's just too much. And it's too much. I just rather just tell my truth. Nobody can use it against me. It's my truth. I told it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
You have the the new movie with Nick Cage coming out, right? Yes, it's coming out on Friday. I'm super excited about it. The trailer looks awesome. The, I just saw the movie last night. It's super awesome. It's called Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, and Nicolas Cage is freaking hilarious in it. And Pedro Pascal, who's known for, you know, playing these dramatic roles and like narcos and whatnot, he kills it. I mean, he's so freaking funny. And it doesn't even feel like they're trying to be funny. And it's just, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. You know, it's interesting to me while I was watching the trailer, I was just like, so when the writers pitched this movie, were there other massive talents that they had as backups that if it wasn't Nick Cage? Like, how do you get that movie made? If Nick Cage passes, it's over? Like, how does that work? If Nick Cage passes, then they get like a Nick Cage lookalike? I don't know. I guess so. I don't know. (laughs) I wonder, no, I'm just like curious from a... um, industry perspective how that movie like how that movie got made like i wonder if they pitched it to him first and had to convince him they definitely pitched it to him first that that i mean when they first came with it i asked the director how how did you get nicholas Cage to do this and he's like i asked i I the script i pitched it to him told him what we can make it you know nick wanted to change the certain things and they collaborated and made it and it was great yeah no it's great it looks it looks amazing. I I, I want to see it for sure. You got to see it with an audience though. Like if it, you know how like certain comedies, you watch it by yourself. You're like, oh, that's funny, but there's nobody there to like laugh with you. When you see this movie, seeing it in a crowd of people, it's like the best, and you will be dying laughing. That's true. I think that it's funny that you say that because I think um, horror movies and comedies are so important to have an audience. Well, Girls Trip, you don't need to have an audience for that. You're going to laugh regardless with that. <laughs> In night school, you're going to giggle here and there, you know. But uh, this movie, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, it's got like a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes as of the last time I looked, which was the day before yesterday. So and to have still 100% um, is really good. Nah, you crushing it. I am. I'm finna have a banger this summer, too. If you want to be in a music video, let me know. But Little Wayne part is so fire, and so is some Snoop's part. It sound like old school Snoop. Like it's is it '94 again? And where's the gin and juice? What the hell? It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'm really excited about it. I haven't been this excited about something since I did Def Comedy Jam. I want to do something where I put nursery rhymes. On hip hop beats. I know Nelly already kind of did it. Eminem, too. What did Eminem put? What nursery rhyme did he put on the beat? Uh, I think it was on the Green Lantern mixtapes, um, his diss to uh, Ja Rule and uh, that camp. And what, what nursery rhyme did he use? A lot. He, he, um, he actually, it's the um, melody that he uses. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the actual words, player. I'm talking about actual <laughs> I'm talking about actual words. I'm going to be up there like, Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Saw Rimbo, Pari Rari Ruchi, Pit Perry Pimpo, Keep It Simple, or I'll bust you like the pimpo. <laughs> you remember that one? You remember Tiki Tiki Timbo? <laughs> no, I never heard of it. Y'all remember that. that one? It's like where the kid, the oldest born, has a really long name. It's a, it's like a Chinese fable, where the where the the young the the oldest kid has a really long name, and the youngest kid has a very short name, and so they was playing around the well, and the oldest brother falls into the well, and his little brother goes first to the man, and he's running, and he's like, my brother, he's in the well, and he's like, who? He's like, Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Saw Rimbo, Perry Wari Ruchi, Pit Perry Pimbo. He's like, go tell your mother. So then he runs to his mama and then says, Ma, 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 my brother fell in the well. Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Saw Rimbo, Perry Wari Ruchi, Pit Perry Pimbo. He fell in the well. And then it's like, what? And then, then they run to like all these people and they keep saying it over and over and they get him out the well and then he gets better. And yeah, his brother don't die. Wow. You don't remember I that? never never heard that before. Oh man, I'm gonna send you the book. It's a chi- <laughs> it, 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 it's a, it's a book, it's a children's book. Okay, well what about what about what about you know about this? Itsy bitsy spider. Went up the water spout. Down came the 
Watch the spider out. I'll came the sun, dried up all the rain. There needs to be some spider. It's on the spider game. That's about game banging. That song's about game banging. <laughs> How is that about game banging? <laughs> you know, they be out in the streets. Then the police come, wash you out, right? Then the, the police go away. They let you out. Then you back up on the water spout. You back out in these streets. <laughs> I think this album's going to be fire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is. I know it is. I'm going to hit him with the skin of a rinky dinky dink. Remember that? <laughs> Remember skin of a rinky dinky dink? Skin of a rinky dink? <laughs> I love you. That's a love song. That's a love song. I'm hitting with that one. <laughs> Put that on a hip hop beat. I'm just saying, just saying. You know, Nelly had Down Down Baby. You know, Love Street and Range Rover. Range Rover. I'm gonna have a Miss Mary Mac 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 all dressed in black, black, black. And then Mary Mary J. Blige gonna be in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. These are thoughts. They might not happen, but they might. We'll see. I mean, I don't think anything stopped you from happening that you wanted to happen. So yeah. Your willpower is amazing. God gave it to me to make things yes. happen. You know, the, my goal for the, this year and by this time next year, anyways, is to create like two thousand jobs. How are you going to do that? Like, what, what field? Or are you working with somebody to help do that? Well, there's a lot of different things. Well, I got like two movies coming up that I got to shoot. Right, that's going to be a bunch of jobs right there. Then my TV show, After Party. That's going to be a bunch of... But look, when um, Burble Way to Master Talent comes out, that's already all, you know, all the movie theaters, people going to work right there. Bat, bat, boo, da, right? <laughs> then, then, you know, uh, I'm in the process of uh, opening a grocery store. Um, I still stay in South Central Los Angeles, and I want to... They, they've shut down a lot of grocery stores around here. And there's not a lot of healthy options. So, like, I have to drive all the way to Hollywood to get my juices and stuff like that or just, you know, make them myself out of my garden. But once the garden is depleted, then, you know, it's like, well, let me drive to Hollywood or, you know, have somebody bring it to me. But instead of doing that, I want to be able to, like, walk down the street to my local grocery store and be able to buy stuff that I know is healthy. Um, and we don't have, have it like that here. So I found a piece of land. I put in a bid for the land. I'm pretty sure I got the land. I've been trying to get it for three years. I'm pretty sure I got it. And then I filled my grocery store. And then my grocery store is going to be different than the average grocery store because it's, it's my store. Duh. So most of the products in it are going to come from black farmers and black vendors. Um, unless there's no black farmers or black vendors that make it, then we'll go outside of that. Um, and there'll be a cooking classes there and financial literacy classes. Because from my experience in life, once you understand how money works and once you learn how to eat right, then your life is just a lot better and become a more productive citizen. And then when you're more productive and healthier and happier, the family is more productive and health, healthier and happier. And then when the family is healthier and happier and productive, the community is. And when the community is, there's less need for police. And that's how I'm going to stop it. systemic racism. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Easy. Super easy. <laughs> easy peasy some people think I'm crazy like they be like girl you crazy just, just oh I start a clothing line do this instead <laughs> no way yeah I, I'd argue that the most successful people in this country and I guess success is subjective but you know if you think about Elon I'm pretty sure people thought he was crazy Jeff Bezos you know mm -hmm. you know Steve Jobs Bill Gates, you know, mm -hmm. Jay-Z. I plan on at some point in time having all their phone numbers. Not right now. I ain't got nobody phone number, but I got their <laughs> products. I got all their products. You said earlier, I was just looking at these that Pharrell doesn't even know that he sent me. But you should make Pharrell give you these since he didn't give you those ice cream shoes. Oh, yeah. Those are nice. 
I wear a nine and a half in women, an eight in men. Okay. Do they got your address? No, but probably. They probably do. Okay. Well, if I get your contact information, I'll send you everything. Or who you <laughs> wanted to go to. Me. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. No problem. Yeah, you got to get her on the list. Yep. Done. Put me on the list so I can wear your shoes and be like, swish, swish. Hmm. Uh, Actually, you're in the NBA ads. Do you like basketball? Yes, the players are so hot. (laughs) (laughs) I don't necessarily like to watch basketball, but I love to play. And... um, and the only way I really like watching back, like I like to watch it live. I used to be the mascot in school. So like I love pretty much all sporting events if I can be at it. If I have to watch it on TV, I'm kind of like irritated by that. But if I can be there, that's that's what I love. What what team do you like the best so far? Whoever like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a favorite. Well, do you have a data basketball player? I don't have a favorite team. It's like... You know, when I go to a game, I just decide, like, uh, by the first quarter, I decide who I'm rooting for. And and I go by how many players is looking in my direction. What about that question Scott just asked you? What what was the question? Would you ever date a basketball player? Who said I haven't? (laughs) So that's yes? I haven't. When I was younger, not, uh, not as a, you know... I don't know. I don't know. They. I I mean, I definitely would hang out. They're fun. They're funny. It's a good time. I probably would just have sex with them. I probably wouldn't date them, though. (laughs) Straight up. That's fair. I wouldn't marry one. Nah. Yeah, but maybe. I mean, they're not all the same people, though. I know, but. They they all talk. They most of the time they all talk. And I like sleeping in queen size beds. Uh <laughs> so that I'm guaranteed to be held. Uh when they too big, they be legs be hanging off the end and all of that. <laughs> you, know. you ever slept with a basketball player in a twin size bed? <laughs> Forget I can't about it. Lay on him. Which is nice, but now I'm cool. Yeah. No. I ain't never when I was young I used to think Magic Johnson was cute, then he got sick. Then I used to think um uh, then I used to think Michael Jordan was the business, you know, like, oh he's so fine. But uh I don't really think like that no more. Like I don't be on that. I'll be on some like, how much work do they get done? What are they doing in the community? Like I'll be looking at those stats. And then, can I look at them for more than five minutes and not feel like throwing up? I don't even think I want to date anybody famous anymore. I think I want to just keep it on the, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a doctor. A freaking like scientist or something. What about, what about Jewish guy? Yeah, I'll date Jewish guy as long as they're not too, you know. It's uh, men got egos from what I've experienced, and, and I don't know. I'm learning how. I, I guess as I get older, I might figure it out. But I'm not very good at catering to the male ego. I'm good at playing with it. <laughs> I'm not good at catering <laughs> to it. Yeah, I definitely know how to activate it, but I don't know how to turn it off. I don't know what to do. That should be what your album's about. You know what? There's another song I'm going to record later on today that is dealing in that subject matter. Is there going to be any um, uh, material, like comedy material, in on your album? Yeah. I, I don't want it to be a full album, no. I'm not trying to make it a full album. I'm trying to make, I guess, I'm still learning the differences and stuff, but I just want to make, like, singles is what I'm seeing in my head, singles that I can drop into projects. That's in alignment mm. with different you know like what you do with Issa what you mean 
Don't you do music for Issa Shop for Insecure? Mm-mm. You didn't do that? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, we we were we were helping her with our awkward black girl. Oh, with awkward black girl. Mm-hmm. I'm not for insecure. Mm-mm. Oh. Uh, well, I got a show coming called Hollywood Hattie. She wanna get on? You mind? You mind? <laughs> <Not like. laughs> so uh, proud of her, though. By the way, very proud of her. I'm she super she, proud of her. Yeah, Isha on fire. Super she fire. On fire. And she creating them jobs and opportunities for others. I think that's so dope. Yeah, she killing it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but so are you, man. So are you. This is, this is, I don't know where we at in time, but I, I still feel the need to just. No, this, this, is, this is enough for sure. Well, I didn't know where we were, but I was just, I was just going to say, we're, regardless of where we were, I just needed to just say it again. Like, man, you're really impressive. And beautiful, thought, by the way. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying, you know. Good genetics. <laughs> <laughs> but I also mean your spirit, too. That's what I mean. Okay. That's still genetic, too. I think, I think in my mind, I think that we already know who our parents are going to be and everything before we even get to Earth. And then when we be here, we just doing our lesson plan. And then we have freedom of will to change things. And I think when you're born with like a big nose or a funny lip or a little hand or big hand, that's to accomplish the challenges that you have already set out to accomplish that you don't remember, but you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I got little titties. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my listen, I love you making um, singles for like your projects, but you should definitely put out an album and you should. And because because your your comedy um, and like what, what you just did just now, it's like it's the kind of comedy that I love. It's I love when it's not just funny. I love when it's some serious, whether it's like philosophy or like real life experience with a with a great like you know arc in the story of a lesson but you just but it's funny the entire time and you know I don't know what that's called in comedy I don't I don't know I don't know the terminology for it but you could make a comedy album get nominated for a grammy right? yes man and, well and I, did, I did I did that already. I did that <laughs> I don't know if you know it won Oh, what, but was that for your book or what that was? It's for my comedy special. I actually did the song, an uh, opening song number, singing and dancing number, the beginning of my special Black Mitzvah, um, where uh, I did that with, who did I do that with? Uh, who did that track? Uh, Just Blaze did the track. And, you know, I sang and I rapped. I sang in Hebrew, rapped in English. And then I did... 45 minutes, 55 minutes of comedy and closed it out with the song and won a Grammy. Beat out that's a, several Jews and two white boys. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I was I was just saying, like, I think, you know, it could be mostly your music. You know what I'm saying? I was just saying, just having some of that audience stuff, like what you just said, it's amazing. Just offering that to people. Drop it in there. Drop it in the songs. Okay, so what me and my cousin be doing sometimes when I go to Atlanta, we be having these, like, uh, I'll rent a house that got, like, a fire pit in the backyard. And we'll have, like, a little uh, camp. Like, we call it a, a element party. And we sit out by the fire. And I pull up beats from, like, YouTube for, like, campfire, easy listening hip hop beats, right, that'll be on YouTube. And then we just make up songs for like two or three hours, just freestyling and rapping and like singing and all of that. Uh, that's one of my other favorite things to do, to just play those back and listen to them and just be busting up laughing. Cause we actually be making some some bangers. And we be talking, <laughs> we call ourselves the elements. <laughs> we call ourselves 
Ah, it's hilarious. And she always be talking about how she's coming from her. She was like, when I was on my spiritual retreat. And for years, I'm like, what the f***? What, what spiritual retreat did you go to? I want to go on one. She was like, girl, I was in prison. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we be having fun though. I got a lot of, lot of, lot of that. Yeah, a lot of voice memos. A lot of fun. Yeah, you could drop those voice memos in like the NWA albums, where they would use different little uh, uh, skits in between the songs. I might have to do that. Uh, then I'm gonna have to go on tour, and then Beyonce gonna be mad at me, like, "Girl, why are you selling out all these stadiums?" I'm gonna be like, "B, just get on the show with me. We can do it together, girl." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I love um, well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, yeah. Good conversation. Good fun. We got to do it again at some point. I'm with it. So you in Miami? Mm-hmm. Why are all the like all the cool people in Miami? What's popping in Miami? No taxes. Oh, I need to move <laughs> to Miami. <laughs> the weather's beautiful too. I the feel weather like and the water. Go there, I get in trouble though. So. No, that's because that's South Beach. You can't be on South Beach. You gotta just just it's elsewhere. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Miami's big. It's not just South Beach. No, I'm going to places. Be huh? I'm going to need to be educated. Okay. I have the uh, 26th to the 30th off work. So, no. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll see y'all later. I'm okay. A, I'm Thank you so much. Thank you.